A customer recently challenged me to create a data loader app for Snowflake that even their grandmas could use. And when I say grandmas, I'm talking about the business users who think SQL is a mythical creature. Now, I'm not the one to back down from a challenge, especially when someone's already promised something on my behalf. So I decided to take on that task and create a Snowflake data loader app in just five minutes. Let me tell you, it was a wild ride. By the end of this video, you'll learn how to create a simple drag and drop data loader app for Snowflake on Streamlit that literally anyone can and should use. Hey guys, my name is Sasha and I work as a senior sales engineer for Snowflake. And my passion is data, data science, and building data applications that I showcase to my customers. Streamlit is just a tool for that and it complements Snowflake's data cloud perfectly. Now, while database specialists working in SQL or Python data engineers working with data frames feel at home when working with Snowflake, it's a little bit different for business users. There's just no easy way for a non-technical user to simply drop data into Snowflake and directly jump into their favorite business intelligence tool like Tableau and start analyzing data. In this video, we're changing that. By the end of the video, you'll learn how to create a virtual environment for Python with all the necessary packages to build a simple data loader app for Snowflake. Connect to Snowflake from Streamlit. Create a simple drag and drop UI in Streamlit for CSV files. Showcase the finished Streamlit app and browse the data in Tableau. And keep watching this video till the end for bonus content. I'll show how to add data quality checks so the business user can assess the quality of data with just a quick glance at the UI. Let's jump into it. Creating a virtual Python environment for Streamlit. I use the Conda package manager to make sure I work with correct Python package versions so I avoid the dependency hell. If you don't know what that is, I've explained it in my video, start learning Python, make it fun with Streamlit. Here's how to create an environment with all the necessary Python packages. First, create a Conda environment. Next, activate that environment. And finally, install Streamlit into that environment. If you're not a Conda user, you can still install these packages by using pip, for instance. Connect to Snowflake from Streamlit. We'll store our Snowflake credentials in the creds.json file. And here's an example that contains all required properties for connecting to Snowflake. Make sure to replace this placeholders with real values for your Snowflake account. Create a simple drag and drop UI in Streamlit. I use VS Code as my development environment and if you want to know why I like it so much, make sure you watch this clip. Let's jump into VS Code and start working on our app. To start building a Streamlit app, we just need to import the Streamlit Python package. Now we can run the app from the terminal like so. Now that the app is running, let's add the amazing Streamlit file uploader component that does all the work for us. That's it. It literally takes two lines of code to build the simplest drag and drop UI in Streamlit. If anyone can beat this, I'm buying them a beverage of their choice and I'm gonna ship it internationally. The return value of the file uploader component is an uploaded file class object, a subclass of bytes.io. Therefore, it's file-like, which means you can use it anywhere in Python where a file is expected. We'll load this file to a pandas data frame. Why pandas data frame? Pandas has a convenient read underscore CSV method that will infer the CSV schema automatically, so we don't need to build that complex logic of recognizing column types ourselves. Pandas data frame can be serialized to a Snowflake table with a single line of code using Snowflake's Snowpark API. The table will be automatically created reusing the schema from the pandas data frame. This saves us a ton of effort of having to parse that CSV to extract column names, column types, delimiters, and whatnot. Let's add these two lines of code to complete our app. Notice that we are using the session object for data operations on Snowflake. Here's the code we need to create that session object using the credentials file. We can process the file only once something has been dropped, so we'll add that logic too. And we might as well add error handling so the user knows what's going on. And finally, here's the complete application code for our simple Snowflake data loader. That's all. I've written a CSV data loader for Snowflake with just 20 lines of Python code. And it took me only five minutes to do that. Showcase the finished Streamlit app. Let's find a random CSV and see what happens when we drop it into our app. Now we can analyze this table directly in Tableau. 
Now that we've enabled the business users to load their data into Snowflake easily and analyze them with their BI tool of choice like Tableau, let's provide some initial data quality checks as well. Here's the Python function that does just that. Let's run this code and break this down a little bit. First, we'll list all the column names with types for the newly created table. This is useful to check if the schema was inferred as the user expected. Then we'll present two more lists side by side, numeric columns and categorical columns. This is useful to understand which further data processing we might undertake, potentially enriching with data from other sources or transforming the values for machine learning perhaps. Finally, we'll show the column statistics, including counts of null values or value ranges for each column. Based on this, the business user can decide if they will be able to use this data set for their intended analysis with just a quick glance at the UI. In this video, I've built a basic data loader app that anyone understands and is immediately able to use. It only took me 5 minutes and exactly 20 lines of Python code to do just that. In the description below the video, you'll find a link to the GitHub repository along with the instructions on how to install this app. If you find this video useful, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel so YouTube knows they should share this content with others. Thanks for watching this video, stay healthy and stay tuned.